In this section, we are going to continue talking about quadratic equations, but we're going to talk about different aspects than the, than the ones we covered in the unit two. Okay, so um, the main thing we're going to talk about here is the vertex of a quadratic function and how that relates to the overall graph of the quadratic function. Okay, now we'll talk a little bit more about what the vertex is um, later on in this example. Once we have a visual of what the graph looks like, then I will talk more about the vertex. But for now, let's just worry about how to find the vertex. If you have a quadratic equation in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the vertex can be found by the following steps. The x value is negative b over 2a. And to get the y value, you plug in the x value that you get from negative b over 2a. So what are our a and b values? Okay, our a value is the coefficient of the x squared, the b value is the coefficient of the x, and c is the constant. Even though the c is not used in this uh, equation x equals negative b over 2a, we still have to be aware of what the constant is. So let's look at our example, in your, your first example in the media notes. The example is y equals to x squared minus 4x minus 5, and part a just says find the vertex. And when we get to part c, I want to highlight what the vertex is. So the vertex, in this case, we're going to use a formula, x equals to negative b over 2a. Okay, how do we get those values? a is the coefficient of the x squared, b is the coefficient of the x, and c is a constant. So if we have negative b, that's negative, negative 4, and we're going to divide that by 2a, which is 2 times 1, that's the coefficient of the x squared. We get two negatives because we have a negative from the formula, and we have uh, the b value is also negative, so we get two negatives. So these become positive. And then 4 divided by 2 will give us an x value of 2. Okay, you've got 4 divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this will, this will be the x value of uh, the vertex. Now, how do you get the y value? To get the y value, you're going to plug in the x value into your equation. So we're going to get y equals to x squared, which is 2 squared, minus 4x, which is 4 times 2, minus 5. 2 squared, that's 4, minus 8, minus 5. Negative 4 minus 5, that's equal to negative 9. So the y value of the vertex is negative 9. Now the thing is, 2 and negative 9, these are not separate values. They go together. And the reason they go together is because you, you got y equals negative 9 when you plug in x equals 2. So this is an ordered pair, okay? Or this is a coordinate point. An ordered pair means we have to write that as an ordered pair. So you will write the vertex as 2 comma negative 9. So in part A, that will be our vertex. Okay, let's look at part B. Part B says um, complete the following table. So you guys have a table x, y that's completely blank. Okay, so in part B, you have a blank table. To graph a quadratic equation, you need five points. Okay, so to graph a quadratic, you need five points. Here's how you create those five points. We set our vertex from part A was 2 comma negative 9. The vertex is going to go in the center of your table. Okay, so the x value is 2, y value is negative 9. That goes in the center. You need, remember, you need five points. Here's how you get the other five points. You pick two points to the left of two, so you pick one and zero. You pick two points to the right of two, which are three and four. So now you have your five points. But we still need all the y values for these. So we're going to take each x value, plug it into the equation to get the y value. Now, I want you to pause the video. I want you to work this out on your own paper. And once your table is filled in, you can resume the video, and I'll go over the answers with you. OK, so hopefully by now you were able to fill the table in. Um, if x is 0, then y is going to be 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 5. That's going to be 0 minus 0 minus 5, so the y value is going to be negative 5. If x is 1, you get 1 squared minus 4 times 1 minus 5. So that's going to be 1 minus 4, that's negative 3, and negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. 
Then we have 2 negative 9, we already found the vertex. Uh, when x is 3, you have 3 squared minus 4 times 3 minus 5. So this is 9, 9 minus 12 um, is negative 3, negative 3 minus 5 is going to be negative 8. Then you plug in x equals 4. If you plug in x equals 4, you get 4 squared, which is 16, minus 4 times 4, which is also 16, minus 5. So this gives you 16 minus 16, that's 0. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. So in part b, this is what our table looks like. You put the vertex at the center, pick two points to the left, two points to the right, and you plug it in to get the y values. Okay, now let's plot these. You have 0, negative 5, so 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Then you have 1, negative 8, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. And you guys also have a graph in part C, so you can graph along. Uh, we have 2, negative 9. Then we have, again, 3, negative 8. And then we have 4, negative 5. So our sketch, and this doesn't have to be exact, it just has to be a sketch, is going to look something like this. Okay. Now let's go back to the vertex. The vertex is the center point here, okay, where the two sides of the parabola they come together. That's your vertex. Now notice that if you go one unit away from the vertex in either direction, you get the same y value. You get negative eight. You go one unit this way. You go one unit this way. The y value is the same, which is negative eight. Same thing happens if you go two units to the left or two units to the right, you get the exact same y value. So we get 0, negative 5, and you get 4, negative 5. The reason for that is quadratic equations are symmetric in relation to the vertex. So if this is your vertex, you go one unit left, one unit right, you will have um, the same y value. Then if you go two units left, two, two units right, you will get the same y value. So the this graph, this quadratic equation, is symmetric with respect to your vertex. Okay, so uh, in part C, we had to um, sketch a graph, which we did. Now, in part D, we have to find the axis of symmetry. Remember what I just said that this graph is symmetric, which means if you go one unit left, one unit right, you'll have the same y value, two units, two units, same y value. So this graph is symmetric in relation to the vertex. And you can see that if I draw this dotted line right through the vertex. If I draw this dotted line right through the vertex, this dotted line, it splits the left side and the right side of the, of the quadratic equation, the parabola, and these two sides are the exact same. Okay, so this dashed dotted line this is called the axis of symmetry. Okay, and we're going to get to part D. Okay, so in part D, we have the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is the line that goes through the vertex and splits it quadratic into two halves. We have to find that equation for this line. So remember, each every vertical line. The reason it's vertical is because all the x values are fixed. So for example, we said our vertex is 2, negative 9. If you look at this point, this is 2, 0. If you look at another point, this is 2, 1. If you look at another point, this is 2, negative 2. You take any point on this, on this line, and the x values are all going to be fixed. Which means the equation for this axis of symmetry is going to be x equals to 2. This, this is a vertical line where each x value is 2. Now the y, y values can change, but the x's are all equal to 2. So for part D, that's the equation for the axis of symmetry. Part E, we want to find the range. Now we've done this before, so let's, let's, do, this, uh, let's do this again. The range refers to the y values. The lowest y value is negative 9. Here, it goes to infinity. So the range is going to be negative 9 to infinity, as we did from unit 2. Um, now, lastly, for part F, well, not lastly, um, for part F, we have to find the maximum or the minimum value of the function. 
Okay, now here's the thing. This graph, it opens up. Because it opens up, 2, negative 9 is the lowest value in the graph. This is the lowest point on the graph. So when the graph opens upwards, you will have a minimum value. Okay, you have a minimum value because the graph opens up. And because it opens up, this point is the lowest point on the graph or the minimum value. And when we talk about the minimum value, we are referring to the y value. So the minimum value of the graph is going to be y equals to negative 9. Remember, when you talk about the value of a graph, we're talking about the y values. So the minimum value is going to be y equals to negative 9. Okay, now part G, it says find the intervals where the function is increasing and where the function is decreasing. Again, we've done this, so it's a little bit of review. Going left to right, increasing means the function is going up, the y values are increasing. Decreasing, going left to right, the y values are decreasing or the function is going down. So it's increasing. Now remember, interval is always refers to the x value. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that. Interval always refers to the x value. So our interval of increasing starts at x equals two, and this little arrow means it's going to continue infinitely. So the x's are gonna keep getting infinitely bigger, and the y's are gonna keep getting infinitely bigger. So our increasing interval is going to be two to infinity. Okay, from x equals two to infinity, our function is increasing. Where is it decreasing? So it's decreasing going left to right on that interval. So it's coming from negative infinity and it decreases all the way until x equals positive two. So the decreasing interval is going to be negative infinity comma two. Remember for increasing and decreasing, we use parentheses in our bracket because at two, the function is neither increasing nor decreasing. Okay, so there, there's part G. Now, the last part, it asks us to find the intercepts. We want to find the x-intercept and we want to find the y-intercept. So, quick recap from um, unit one. To find the x-intercept, we set the y value equal to zero and solve for x. To get the y-intercept, you set the y value equal to zero. Sorry, to, you set the x value equal to zero and solve for y. Okay, to get the x-intercept, set the y value equal to zero. To get the y-intercept, set the x value equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. To find the x-intercept, we set the y value equal to zero. So we're gonna get zero equals to x squared minus four x minus five. You can solve this two ways. You can solve this by factoring if it's possible, or you can use a quadratic formula. Factoring is always easier, so let's use factoring. We're gonna get zero equals to x minus five times x plus one. Um, and again, we have factored quite a lot, so I'm not gonna go through the steps, uh, but it's gonna be x minus five times x plus one, which means if you solve each of these uh, parentheses, we're gonna get x minus five equal to zero and x plus one equal to zero. So x equals five and x equals negative one. We can't leave our answer like this. We have to write this as an ordered pair. So since we set y equal to zero to get these x values, our x-intercepts are going to be five zero and negative one zero. Okay, so we have an x value of five, y value of zero, x value of negative one, y value of zero. To get the y-intercept, we set the x equal to zero. So we're going to get y equals x equals to zero, it means we are going to get zero squared minus four times zero minus five. So this is zero, zero, minus five, we're gonna get y equals to negative five. Okay, so our, our y-intercept is going to be zero, negative five. The x value is zero because we set x equals to zero. When we do that, this is zero, this is zero, so your y value just becomes negative. 